jazz to experience it, feel it, enjoy it. We have got together six different musical groups today whose styles vary a good deal. However, the labels given to different kinds of jazz, swing, progressive, Dixieland, don't really mean very much. Next group you're going to hear is a kind of mixture. Chicago jazz, New Orleans jazz, and swing. Among the musicians, Rex Stewart on the cornet, Pee Wee Russell clarinet, Vic Dickinson trombone, Coleman Hawkins tenor saxophone, Nat Pierce piano, Danny Barker guitar, Milt Hinton bass, and Joe Jones on the drum. And the leader, Red Allen, thinks the blues are good medicine for all of us. Always the blues. Very short, 12 bars. The cotton how a guy feels. Maybe they might have a happy feeling and still could play great blues. Might be very sad and still could. But it's uh, the atmosphere of the other guy. It's exciting, and uh, it reaches the next person. Probably they may have troubles, and I think it helps to make them happy. I'll forget their troubles. Same as to do the playing of the person. Seems like it injects into the next person. In fact, that's what I seem to pick up from uh, people that's listening. Nice. Watch it. Wow. Wow.
back in a moment at part two with the sound of jazz. Just a reminder now, Tallulah Bankhead stars tonight in the General Electric Theater presentation, Eyes of a Stranger playing a woman who has had a deep need to surround herself with a train of admirers over whom she can tyrannize, Miss Bankhead has a role tailored to her dynamic talents. Then an eye operation brings about a strange character change when this social despot discovers that she's been given the eyes of a priest. You can see Tallulah Bankhead with Richard Denning in Eyes of a Stranger when the General Electric Theater comes to you this evening over most of these same stations. Now our big band, Count Basie's, is going to explore a different kind of blues, Kansas City blues. Basie's approach in these next two numbers is freewheeling, forthright, very sophisticated. This is a swinging band. On trumpets are Emmett Berry, Joe Newman, Doc Cheatham, uh, Roy Eldridge, and Joe Wilder. On trombones, Benny Morton, Vic Dickinson, and Dickie Wells, who incidentally inspired one of the numbers called Dickie's Dream. On saxophones, Earl Warren, Ben Webster, Coleman Hawkins, and Jerry Mulligan. The rhythm section is among the most famous in jazz. On piano, Comp Basie. On the guitar, Freddie Green. On the bass, Eddie Jones. On the drums, Joe Jones. And singing the blues, Jimmy Rushing. Jimmy? Hi, John. Anytime a person can play the blues, he has a soul, and that gives him uh, sort of a lift to play anything else he wants to play. And uh, the blues is sort of a base. It's like the foundation to a building, you know. And one thing, it has to tell a story. It's like the pop tunes of the day. You take the majority of the hit uh, of the pop tunes while they tell a story, something that happened. To and it gets to the people because it has a feeling. Different times in my life, different things happening about, they used to jump around quite a bit. Girlfriends and different things like that. And I, and I had a little girl I was going with and I left for one time, you know. And I just built a blues that right around that, left my baby standing in the back door crying. She said, son, you got a home as long as I've got mine. I left my baby standing in the back door crying. Yes, I left my baby standing in the back door crying. She said, son, you've got a home as long as I've got mine.
We'll be back in a moment with part three of The Sound of Jazz. Well now, a reminder that tonight, a fabulous array of guests joins Ed Sullivan. On hand will be the world famous actor, author, wit, Noel Coward in person. In Munich, you'll see Kirk Douglas, Tony Curtis, Ernest Borgnine, and Janet Lee. Other headliners will include the Platters, the Viennese opera star, Jean Madeira, the Princeton Triangle Club, and straight from the famous Parisian music hall, the Lido, comes Eric Brand. While from New York's Radio City Music Hall, there'll be Eileen O'Dare. See them all when they join Ed Sullivan on the Ed Sullivan Show tonight over most of these same stations. Again, Studio 58 and the Sound of Jazz. Billy Holiday is one of a handful of really great jazz singers. Her blues are poetic, highly intense. Playing with her here today are some of the musicians who accompanied her back in the 30s and some of the greatest jazz records ever made. Among the musicians, Roy Eldridge and Doc Cheatham on trumpets, Coleman Hawkins, Lester Young and Ben, <coughs> ben Webster on saxophone, Vic Dickinson on trombone, Jerry Mulligan on baritone sax, Mal Waldron at the piano, Milt Hinton, Hinton on bass, Danny Barker on guitar, and O.C. Johnson on the drum. Billy Holiday. The blues to me is like being very sad, very sick, going to church, being very happy. There's two, two kinds of blues. There's happy blues and there's sad blues. I don't think I ever sing the same way twice. I don't think I ever sing the same tempo. One night's a little bit slower, the next night is a little bit brighter. It's going how I feel. I don't know, the blues is sort of a mixed up thing, you just have to feel it. Anything I, I do sing, it's, it's part of my life. Yeah. 
In recent years, there have been some new approaches to jazz. One of the younger groups is the Jimmy Dupree Three. However, the blues of the Jimmy Dupree Three, while well modern, go directly back to the folk origins of jazz itself. The trio in question, the Jim Atlas on bass, Jim Hall on guitar, and on clarinet and saxophone, Jimmy Dupree, who can explain much better than I can how he feels about his own music. The feeling of the blues, it's in all of jazz, modern jazz, and ancient jazz, and what have you. It's a mixture of happiness and sadness right together some way. I try to let the um, feeling or the flow of things get the last word over the mathematical idea. A big pool of feeling. But uh, there are three of us, three men who think alike, or at least have the same insight. So we try to uh, keep the thing balanced Usually, in that living, you have um, your theme, and then each man ad-libs for a long time. Each one of them has to be prepared to play an individual part, uh, a melody of his own. If the uh, saxophone is playing a moving part, well, the bass has to be sensitive to play another kind of part that fits with that musically. You don't scream at them while they're whispering.
We've heard a lot of different kinds of jazz this afternoon. Now let's try mixing up some of the various styles, see what happens. On this last group, Joe Jones on drums, Milt Hinton on the bass, and Danny Barker on the guitar. It'll be a real spontaneous session. Two clarinetists, the young Jimmy Jufri, and a real old timer, Pee Wee Russell. heard only a few of the ways that jazz is being played, but you have heard some of its greatest performances. Most of what you've seen and heard has been improvised, both collectively and individually. And that really is what jazz is. Until next week, goodbye. Columbia Records has cut a long-playing record of today's program, which will be called The Sound of Jazz. It'll be released early next year. On audio for today's Sound of Jazz, Sam Lane and Bruno Zerato, Jr.
A poem of praise to the nation's greatest city is Sunday's presentation on the Seven Lively Arts. The city is New York. The author, E.B. White. White's tribute to his hometown will carry the viewer from the towers of Manhattan, through the city's crowded streets, from the serene silence of an afternoon in Central Park where all is peaceful, to the gay intimacy of an ex-speakeasy in New York twilight. The Seven Lively Arts takes a lingering look at Manhattan, its sorrowful citizens on the Bowery, as well as the happiness of a concert on the Mall. White's essay is illustrated by an hour of film made by the Seven Lively Arts. It is narrated by E.G. Marshall and accompanied by the music of Pulitzer Prize winner Norman DeLaGioio. Sunday on the Seven Lively Arts on the CBS Television Network.